When I tested FSR3 frame generation on my NVIDIA GPU, I did notice that the input lag was not very good. So now some of you commented, hey, did you know that you can use a special K injection to improve the input lag because we can get all these NVIDIA low latency features working and it works and you do get a better input lag. So now this is not very easy to notice and I had to double check to make sure that it was not a placebo effect, okay? Because it was not like, wow, night and day difference. It is tough to notice, but it is there. After a lot of testing, yeah, it is there. Back and forth is definitely an improvement. This is a very advanced tool that does a little bit of everything. We can get auto HDR with a special K. We can do, you know, monitoring. We can do frame limiting. A lot of things. So I am going to start dropping some tips for a special K. I'm just getting started with it. Okay, I'm starting to learn. I am going to do a separate video about the auto HDR with a special K because I've been exploring that for a while now. And but for today, I just want to introduce this tool to you. Link in the description of the video is very easy. All you have to do is download it here and you install it the same way you install any program. This is not like Reshape. You don't have to copy or do the installation per game and copy on the you know game installation folder or none of that. You just install the program and when you open a special K, it's going to look like this. You're gonna have a list of, of some games and then all you have to do is you have to open the game from the list here. And if the game is not listed, you just click here, add game, you search the executable, and that's it. You open it from here, and a lot of games work. So a lot of games don't work. And for example, a game like Cyberpunk, it was working before the update, and for some reason, the, the latest update is not working, the Phantom Liberty. I don't know why, it's, it's just not working with a special K. So some games crash when you try to open it with a special K, some games conflict with a MSI Afterburner uh, Riva Turner Statistics Server. One thing I had to do to improve the compatibility was to change a setting here on Riva Turner. And I like to use this, it might not even be necessary because we do have monitoring, uh, ad very advanced monitoring from special K, so it is, it is kind of redundant to use both, but I just like it, okay? I'm used to it, so I want to use it anyway. So here with Riva Turner, a statistics server, you have to come here to set up, and then you have to check this box here that says use Microsoft Detours API hooking. And that's it, that's going to improve the compatibility, but still you're gonna have some issues with some games getting these two working in. <laughs> In some games, I have reshade, a special K and Riva Turner at the same time. So that's kind of <laughs> overkill. Uh, but this is awesome. This is very, very good. We can get a latency improvement. You see here, NVIDIA latency management, low latency plus boost. So now let me try to show you. See if you can see the difference. Okay, it's, it's, it's not easy to see, but I'll try my best to show you here on camera. And look at the at the character. So look at the at the time when I move the, the stick and the response. Okay? Tara. 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 I try to give you like a like a sound <laughs> of you know what I see in front of me, the speed of the respond uh, response basically. I'm a musician, so I, I think that's a that's a very good a way of me, you know, transmitting what I see in front of me. Tara. 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 Okay? So it's tara. So now let's change it to off. Let me turn off this uh, low latency plus boost. Okay, let's see now. Tara, 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 tara. See, it's a little bit slower. <laughs> Again, at first glance, I was like, is this even making a difference? It's not easy to see, but it is there. It is there. Tara, 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 tara. So the way I, th I test the latency, I think about like if it was, you know, like a metronomic uh, timing. So it is easier for me to tell the difference. So the difference is there. Give it a try. This is more about feeling. It's difficult to tell. And now which one is better? Low latency plus boost 
nothing plus boost, a low latency. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I, I don't know. Let me know <laughs> if, you, if you're sure 100% which one is better. We also have some millisecond numbers here that I have to get familiar with. So again, I'm just getting started. For now, I am presenting it to you. Download it, play around with it. If you know, if you know better, let me know so I can make a video and show everybody. Just getting started, I think this is a very powerful tool for auto HDR and for this kind of stuff, monitoring, you know, frame, frame pacing to improve everything. And another thing I wanted to comment on this video is that I saw some videos from other channels where this frame time graph using frame generation, FSR3, was going crazy. And, and AMD said that that, it, that was normal. It is not happening to me, okay? You see the frame time graph is absolutely perfect. And actually, you see here the 1% lows is like over 90 FPS. Sometimes you see like a spike for some reason, and then it goes down. But it is usually over 90 FPS for the 0.1% low and the 1% low. And I have like a rock solid frame time. There is no like um judder or anything i'm recording this video at 30 fps so i'm not gonna be showing you know motion clarity because it sucks <laughs> at 30. the reason why i have to record at 30 fps is because i am using oled motion pro high at 100 hertz and the shutter speed of my camera has to be 1 over 50 1 over 100 or a multiple of that so you don't see the flickering okay because in the, in the fsr3 reaction video the screen started to flicker, <laughs> okay? And I didn't notice that because at the beginning it was at 120 hertz, okay? That's why I'm recording at 30, so I can have that shutter speed of one over 50. So I'm not gonna be showing you motion clarity on this video because it sucks at 30, but trust me, the motion clarity is just flawless. There's no judder because I saw a video from uh, Daniel Owen. He also has an LG C1 OLED and the graph, it was a spiking and here's the thing he tested it at 120 fps i am testing it at 100 because i know that's what my system can give me consistently with good one percent lows you can see it here 0.1 percent low almost 90 fps right now one percent low 92 fps you see it right now is 92 for each so this is absolutely incredible performance very very solid uh, frame rate you see it here so now I did read you know what AMD has to say about this and they said that it's normal that to see like a frame time spiking and it is a mess it's not happening to me okay and Del Daniel Owen said that at 120 which was what he tested he was getting judder okay and I did tested it at 120 and I did get judder but the thing is my PC cannot achieve the level of consistency at 120 fps that i am getting here okay so i have to use ultra performance for the upscaling and lower the graphics and it's just not possible okay i knew from the beginning without even testing that 100 fps was going to be the way to go for me okay and for me now this is just perfect because of course i'm not gonna play this game because i don't like it but for a game that performs similar to this one this is what i would do 100 FPS, all Motion Pro High, it looks like 263 frames per second, which is absolutely amazing. And now with this improvement on the latency, it feels good. So now, it feels good, it is rock solid, consistent performance. My GPU like at 73%, so I know it's not gonna drop. I tweaked the in-game settings a little bit, so I lowered the settings to make, just to make sure it's not gonna drop. And this is just a fabulous experience, okay? Awesome. That FSR3 frame generation video got a lot of views and I see that, you know, a lot of new people to the channel, they are not familiar with the Blur Busters law. And I tried my best to, to explain why I am saying that at 100 FPS, my LG C1 makes games look like 263 frames per second. Okay, some people th thought that this 263 frames per second was related with FSR3 frame generation, it is not, okay? We're talking about a persistence reduction. This LG C1 using this feature, OLED Motion Pro High, 
reduces the persistence, the pixel visibility time, and it improves the motion clarity as a consequence, okay? It reduces the persistence to 38%. So basically, instead of being just sample and hold, it draws the picture left to right, top to bottom. And after you have 38% of the screen, based on my testing, it scrolls that down and the rest is black, okay? Motion clarity is limited by persistence. So at 120 FPS, 100 Hertz, really we are reducing the persistence to 3.8 milliseconds, okay? So it is 10 milliseconds at 100 Hertz. So you divide one divided by 100, multiply by 1000 to get the result in milliseconds. You get 10 milliseconds of persistence, just sample and hold on this LG OLEDs. The gray to gray is fabulous. So you don't have blur due to gray to gray limitation. So it closely follows the blur busters law. So now to those 10 milliseconds, you get a reduction of 38% and now you get 3.8 milliseconds of persistence equal to less than four pixels of motion blur when moving at 1000 pixels per second. That's the blur busters law, okay? That's why it looks like 263 frames per second. So basically what you do is you divide one divided by 3.8 milliseconds multiplied by 1000 you get the result that's 263 frames per second it's like the inverse operation that i did before so that's why i said fsr3 we're going here from 50 to 263 frames per second like okay i am not getting 263 fps and i don't have to and it would look in motion the same so let's say that this LG C1 was 263 hertz and I was getting 263 frames per second. It would look the same in motion in terms of motion clarity, okay? Even when you have more frames. So now it's going to look different, but in terms of motion clarity, it's going to look the same. CRTs, for example, at 60 hertz, 60 FPS can have one millisecond of persistence, meaning that they can look like 1000 FPS okay on a 1000 hertz screen crts do have like some trailing artifacts due to the phosphorus decay uh, but they still look fantastic because of that so that's why so i think watch the videos watch the blur busters law videos um you know my journey trying to understand this it was not easy and, and the blur buster chief reached out to me and answered a lot of questions and he actually explained it to me very well and i think i understand that now but it's not like a very simple concept to understand read the blur busters law link in the description of the video the most interesting article on the entire internet if you care about gaming and display technologies for gaming in my opinion so give it a try so yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions like right now if you have an issue with a special k I, I'm still getting started, but I'll try my best to see if I, I can figure out what's going on. It doesn't work for some games. It crashes. Like, there's some issues, but it's a very, very powerful tool. Give it a try. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, if you know better, and if you have any questions.